Hey everybody, it's Angie and welcome to Hot and Flashy. In today's video, we're gonna play with all new drugstore makeup. It may not be brand new, but it's all new to me. A lot of it are new releases and I've got a whole table full of it here in front of me. I haven't done a just trying new makeup video in so long and I so miss it. I so miss just doing like a chatty, putting on makeup video with you guys. So very excited for today's video. Hope you are too. If you're excited for today's video, go ahead and give it a like and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I think I purchased everything here. I don't think any of this came in PR. It was things that I was really interested in. There were some products that you guys suggested and recommended that I try or were curious about so I picked those up too. I've got a whole desk full of makeup here in front of me and I can't wait to dig in and give it a try. All right so the foundation that I'm going to use today is one that was suggested by a viewer. I picked it up. I've actually been using this over the last couple of weeks and I really like it. I talked about it in a recent faves and fails video and I did say that I liked it but I haven't tested it to see how it wears throughout the day and everything. So anyway, it is the L'Oreal Age Perfect 4-in-1 Tinted Balm. I have it in the shade 20 Light and I also picked it up in the shade 10 Light. Here's 20 Light and here is 10 Light. I'm definitely leaning towards the 20 Light so I'm going to go ahead and use that today. I've really been enjoying applying this with a brush. I'm going to use my BK Beauty 106 brush and I just dip the brush right in there, just pounce it in a little bit and pick up a little bit of the foundation and then I just swipe it on and look at that nice coverage. I just love how this foundation feels. Uh, it feels very creamy and very lightweight. It's a balm kind of thing so it doesn't look like a mask of makeup. Of course you can build it up, but I do like how it looks when I use just a nice lightweight coating of it. So I just keep pouncing in a little bit and applying it to each area. And I've actually been kind of using it as an under eye concealer because it's just so easy to put on. Like if you don't really wear a lot of makeup and you're just looking for something that's super easy to throw on in the morning, that will even out your skin tone, be very lightweight, very sheer and natural looking. I think that's what I like the most about this is that it's got a really lightweight finish and it also looks very sheer and very natural on the skin. I think what I am gonna do is I'm gonna use the slightly lighter color and use it as an under eye concealer. To apply it, I'm gonna use my A506 brush. This is the brush collab that I did with BK Beauty. So I'm just gonna take this as a concealer brush just gonna dip this in very lightly, pick up a little bit on the end of my brush, and I'm just gonna apply that under my eye. So I do have a little puffiness under there. It could use a little brightening. Wow, that looks really nice. That goes on so nicely. It blends into itself really well. It's definitely brightening, and it looks really smooth under there. Look how smooth and nice that looks. For the setting powder today, I actually picked up two different powders. I had the NYX Mineral Matte Finishing Powder already purchased for this video, but then I saw Lisa J from Lisa J Makeup and BK Beauty, friend of mine, saw her video where she featured this Physicians Formula Butter Believe It face powder, and she was blown away by how good this is. So I wanna use both of these. I wanna use one under each eye. And here's the NYX powder. It has a little bit of a tint to it. It's not completely clear, but it is a translucent powder. So I'm just gonna pick up a little bit of that with my BK 108 brush. I usually use an e.l.f. brush for this, but it broke. And I'm gonna press it. I love this little brush from BK Beauty. It's just the perfect size to use underneath your eyes, just like the e.l.f. brush. I mean, the e.l.f. brush is like $3, but the BK Beauty brush is much better made, will last a lot longer. Just gonna to try to remove any of the extra powder from the brush. And I'm gonna go in now with the Physician's Formula Powder. Mm, that has the usual Physician's Formula Butter scent to it. I don't really love scented face products. The NYX doesn't have a fragrance. Physician's Formula Powder definitely looks a little bit more matte to me than the NYX powder. So depending if you like a little bit of luminous or really matte powder, uh, this one is more matte. I will use them on the rest of my face as well to set. So let me go ahead and 
continue setting this side of my face. Let's see how it does on the pores. You can see my little enlarged pores over there. I like to add setting powder to help disguise them. You can definitely see how mattified that is, how it really disguised my pores versus this side. So if you like a more dewy, glowy finish and you don't have enlarged pores, you could just leave this unset. But if you have enlarged pores, you could definitely set it. Yeah, that really mattified my pores nicely. I can see why Lisa was blown away by this. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna put a little bit down here. I don't like my upper lip to look sweaty, so just mattify there. That's a really nice powder. I think that looks really, really good. Let me go in with the NYX powder on the other side. All right, that powder worked really well too. That also helped to disguise my pores over here and up here. Let's finish off the rest of the face for my bronzer, blush, and highlighter. I got an all-in-one Physician's Formula Maru Maru Butter Glow Face Palette. This is a limited edition palette. I think the bronzer is a really pretty color because it's not too dark. I'm not sure if they offer this in a second shade that might be a little bit darker for darker skin tones. For my skin tone, I like the look of this. I'm gonna be using my BK 104 brush and I'm gonna start up here in my temples. Just apply a little bit of the bronzer. Ooh, that is a pretty color. It's just giving me that little bit of sun-kissed glow around the edges of my face. All right, so you guys, very exciting news. My sofa is coming tomorrow. <laughs> if you guys are new here, you will not know that I recently moved, not so recently anymore, about six months ago, I moved, I switched states, moved into a new house, and my gosh, getting furniture has been such a challenge. I ordered this sofa back in August. Just gonna use a little bit of this to contour my nose. It's gonna go straight down here. And it's now March. <laughs> And I've been waiting so long for this sofa and I'm so happy it's coming tomorrow. I'm so excited. Went a little heavy handed over here. I'm just gonna take that contour brush and just try to blend that out a little bit. Actually, I wanna blend this a little bit more. I'm gonna go up a little higher here. So for the blush in here, I'm gonna use my A507 brush out of my brush set with BK Beauty. Just gonna pounce it in there a little bit. If I am not familiar with the blush and I don't know how intense it's gonna be, I'll usually just tap some on my wrist first just to get it a little bit off the brush and so I don't end up with, you know, overly blushed here. So anyway, let's just go ahead and pat this on. This brush is, such a great brush. It does like all the blending for you because the head is tapered. So the top part hits your cheek where the blush is and then these parts where you don't have the blush, they do the blending out for you. So when they hit your skin, they kind of blend out the edges for you and it just gives you the most beautiful blush application. That's a really pretty blush too. I feel like it definitely has some shimmer to it. The bronzer is matte. The blush definitely has a little shimmer to it. And the highlighter, wow, kabling! I almost feel like the blush gives enough of a highlight, like compared to this cheek, you can see the highlighter in there. You almost don't need the extra highlight. So I'm gonna use the BK108 brush again, since it's very small. I'm just gonna dip the tip of the brush into the highlighter. I don't wanna get too much off of there because I feel like the fronts of my cheeks are already good. I'm just gonna try to, you know, accentuate the cheekbone up here. So I'm just gonna do a little bit right up here. Uh, have you seen people putting highlighter like at the bridge of their nose? So let me go ahead and do that. We'll see how we like that. Haven't done that yet. The scent isn't overwhelming, but you do smell it when you open the palette and apply it. Now that I've got it on, I can't really smell it anymore. I don't like to use a new eyelid primer for videos like this because I feel like if the eyelid primer isn't good, then it ruins everything that I put on top of it. So I'm just going to use a tried and true, which is the e.l.f. Putty Primer in the Matte Putty Primer. They sold a limited edition set of their three putty primers, which is where I got this. I'm not sure if that's still available. If it is, I'll link it. If not, you can just get the putty primer, which works well as a makeup primer, as well as an eyelid primer. To apply it, I'm gonna use my Angie A505 brush. This is such a versatile brush. It can be used for lots of different things. What I mainly developed it for was laying down shimmer shadows and keeping control of them so you didn't end up with a whole giant shimmery eyelid. So the eyeshadow that I got for this video is from Rimmel. It's their Magnifies Nude Edition eyeshadow palette. 12 pans of color, really beautiful, very inexpensive palette. 
and it even comes with a reasonable brush. I'm going to dip the brush into the third shade in the palette here. This is like a very neutral kind of bone color. I like to take a neutral pale shade like this and I like to pack it on the movable part of my lid from the inner corner to the outer corner. Next I'm going to go in with my A502 brush and I think I'm going to dip into this shade right here, the fifth shade in the palette. This looks like the perfect crease blending color. So I put that on at the outer corner and I kind of drag it from deep in the crease down to my lashes and then I take it in little circular motions letting the brush kind of do the work for me and I just take it across the arc of the crease keeping it above the crease so that this part of my lid stays light and bright. So I go in with a smaller crease brush first just to place the shadow and then I use the bigger crease brush to blend out the shadow. So this is the A503 brush. Let's go in with the A504 brush next. Let's pick up an even darker shade from the palette. I think I'm going to go with this guy right here, this nice dark maroony kind of brown shade. And then I'm just going to try to make a little wedge out here. I want to define where my winged eyeliner is going to go. Because we are going to do a wing today. And guess what I have for that? I have a little eyeliner stamp that we're going to try. So that could be fun. Could also be a disaster. Who knows? But I do like to kind of set up my wing with eyeshadow to start. Let's go in again with the A505, which is that super flat brush that's good for a shimmer color. This guy here, this mauve shimmer, I'm going to apply it to the center of my lid from the crease down. Not really getting too much shimmer. I guess the good news about these shimmers is that they're not glittery. So if you're a more mature person and you're looking for an eyeshadow that will reflect a little bit of light but not be like super glittery, these are good. And then I think I'll go ahead and use this nice bright pink right here, the second shade in the palette. And I'm going to apply this from the inner corner just to lighten that up a little bit. Hardly any fallout with this. These shades, they look like fairly dark, but the color payout isn't hugely dark. So they could be good for like mature beginners if you're a little bit intimidated by uh, colors and by dark eyeshadows, then these could be really good because they don't go on super heavy. They don't go on super opaque. They're a little bit sheer. All right, let's go in with the eyeliners next. For my upper waterline, I'm going to use this eyeliner from Pixie. I define waterline in tightline black. So for your tight lining, you just place the eyeliner right below your lashes on this wet line, and then you just rub it right in there. For my lower waterline, I don't like to do a black for my lowers, just my eye shape. It doesn't look good if I do a full black all the way around. So I usually will do like a lighter, a little bit of a sparklier color for my lower waterline. So for that I have this Pixie Endless Silky Eye Pen in Silver Reflex. Just running the pencil at the edges of my lashes. Ooh, this has a lot of glitter. Woo! I mean it's pretty, but a lot of glitter. Very creamy, very soft. For my winged liquid liner, I got this product called the Flick Stick, and it is an eye liner stamp. See that? And then the other end just has your eyeliner pen. So you go like bonk, and then it's gonna make, supposedly, a really perfect wing. All right, here we go. Oh wow, hey, that is not bad. All right, so now I'm gonna use the other end of it. I'm just gonna draw that across and then fill. Line right at the top of my lashes. Okay, slow and steady wins the race with 59 year old eyes and liquid liners. All right, let's try it on the left hand side. Here is the stamper side. Hopefully this one will go as well. Not terrible, I kind of moved it there. <laughs> I feel like I just have a big black glob out there. Oh, but I did this one way higher than I did that one. I feel like I want to take it off and start again. All right, left wing take two. I seem to have missed again. 
Hopefully third time's a charm with this stamp. This demonstrates why I like my eyeliner to go up at more of an angle because see how it makes my eye look like it droops down here instead of going up. So that is the wrong angle. I need it to go up higher. Take five. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna to have to say success finally with that. Oh my gosh, did that take forever? That was painful, but okay, I feel like they're semi-related, you know, maybe they're cousins. Um, in the meantime, the upper waterline liner has smeared all underneath this eye, so I've got a big raccoon eye going. But anyway, the um, brow product that I got for this is a brow stencil, Just Stamp. Perfect brow in seconds. And I got it in the color 05, which is a light brown. Picked out three of these stencils that I think could work for me. One is called Shooting Star. This one is definitely like thicker than my natural brow and has a little bit more of a arch to it. And then there's this one that I thought would be good, which is called Sexy. <laughs> a little bit higher of an arch than Shooting Star. And then there's this one, which is called Youthful, which of course, I like the sound of that, but I'm always trying to get that straight across and then shooting down at an angle look. So I might try this one. The color is actually in the cap, and so it comes out on the puff ball. I'm gonna hold it with one hand and try to just run this across with the other. And you just follow the stencil. Let's see how that worked. I tried a stencil a few years ago and I really liked it. I feel like that one might have been a little too straight for me. Let me try Shooting Star over on this side. We'll see which one we like better. What the heck, I can walk around with two different eyebrows all day. <laughs> Why not? Okay, Shooting Star. That seems to fit a little bit better. Press. Rub. I mean, the color seems pretty good. Ooh, I like this one a lot better. Shooting star, that's the right one. I like how it filled in that area there. Can I remove it? Ooh, it comes off pretty easily. Let me just edit this part and then spoolie it. All right, let's finish off the eyes with the mascara. I'm gonna use Maybelline The Colossal Curl Bounce. You know, when you're putting on your eyeliner and you're thinking like, oh my gosh, it's not perfect. Then when you put on mascara, it hides a lot of the flaws with the eyeliner. So don't get too obsessed over making your eyeliner absolutely perfect. Um, I feel like with my regular mascara, my drugstore fave, which is this one, L'Oreal Unlimited in the Genie Bottle that I get a lot more length and volume, a lot faster with that one. I don't mind the lashes, I think they look good. They are a little bit too flocked looking for me. I prefer like silky looking lashes. I mean, I think it's supposed to be a curling mascara, is that right? Based on the Colossal Curl Bounce. Are my lashes supposed to bounce? Curl and bounce? <laughs> I don't know. I mean, can you imagine coming up with the names of these things? Let's call it Curl Bounce Mascara. Okay, that sounds good. I feel like it took forever to get here, but let's move on to the lippies. I have a lip pencil from LA Girl, Perfect Precision Lip Liner. This is in Flesh. Okay, as far as the pencil goes, it's very hard. It's not creamy at all. I like more of a creamy, lip liner that goes on a little bit easier. This is very pointy. It's very just stiff and difficult to work with. Color's okay, it's a nice nude. For the lippy, I have this Revlon Colorstay Satin Ink. This is in the shade 007 Partner in Crime. And it's a liquid lipstick. pretty color. I like that. Really easy to apply. Good shaped doe foot. 
All right, so here's the finished look with the makeup. I think it actually looks really nice. Overall, I think this is a good collection of things. They're looking good. There's not really any settling and wrinkles. I feel like the finish on the makeup is really beautiful, skin-like, very natural looking, and very lightweight feeling. So really loving that. I think we'll give this about an eight hour wear test for today. So let me go. It's getting to be about lunchtime already. So I'm gonna have lunch. That will be a good test for the lippy. I think I have to go to the grocery store, do some other errands, film a couple other things. So I'll check back in with you in about four hours. Hey guys, I'm about to go into the grocery store. Thought I would do a quick makeup check-in, open the uh, sunroof so that we could get some nice bright sunshine in here and uh, take a look at things. So here it is. Um, what do we think? It's really pretty good looking makeup, right? I did eat lunch, I had a salad, and this lippy is like solidly in place. I feel like it just doesn't go anywhere. I had a salad <laughs> and a piece of toast and uh, something to drink and look at that, it's still in place. So anyway, that's the car view of the makeup today. All right, hey you guys, I'm back. It's been four hours since I left you. I think overall the makeup is holding up really, really well. It's still really in place. I had a mask on for about an hour while I went to the grocery store and uh, I don't really see much of wearing off on my nose. It actually looks really good there. And uh, this lipstick really is hardly worn off as well. So that looks really good. It has not, uh, run up into my lip wrinkles, so that's also a good thing. Now I'm having my afternoon snack, which I just finished, a bowl of yogurt with blueberries and granola, and I'm having a cup of tea, and this stuff is really, really, really staying in place well, as is the foundation. I don't see hardly any signs of wear in the foundation at all, which is really great. Now I gotta say, this side of my face is looking a little bit shinier than this side of my face, but I don't find either of them offensive. I just feel like the NYX matte powder is keeping this side of my face just a little bit less shiny, a little bit less luminous than the Physician's Formula is on this side of my face. Everything else is still looking good. I can still see like the blush and the bronzer and the highlighter, the eyeshadow is still there. This, um, for a super inexpensive little eyeliner. What is it, stamp? That's still in place really well. The eyebrows, every time I see myself, I'm a, they're a little jarring, they're a little dark. Like look, that's the color that it comes out, and now it's that color. So I'm not sure what happened. It seems to have gotten darker. The foundation is still really in place on my nose and everything. Not settled into wrinkles anywhere. Not in my forehead wrinkles, not in my crow's feet, not in my 11s. Blush and bronzer and highlighter still in place. I still am getting a lot of transfer from that waterline mascara down to my lower waterline. You can see how black that is, how it's transferring. So I prefer ones that don't do that. The under eyes, so this side very smooth, no little crinkles this way. This side, Definitely settled into the wrinkles, a lot of creasing there. And then looking at these two sides, I feel like this is much shinier, more accentuating pores over here than the side is with this powder. So kind of liking this whole side better and we'll attribute it to the powders. Foundation looking good, feeling comfortable, not feeling drying or anything. So really happy with the wear on this so far. I mean, it's only four hours. I would love it to get to eight hours would be great. Um, and I think the eyeshadow still looks pretty. So all in all, having a really, really good makeup day. It's 10.45, so I guess this makes it about a 10 hour and 15 minute check-in. I'd have to say the product I'm most impressed with from the entire day is this Revlon Colorstay Satin Ink. This is still on here from the first application this morning. I haven't touched this up. I haven't done anything to it. For something that's been on there all day, it doesn't really feel drying either. It doesn't look drying. My lips don't look bad. So I am really, really impressed with this. I wanna try this in a few other colors. Really happy I tried this. Probably second favorite product for today is the foundation. I'm really happy that one of my viewers suggested this. As you know, I've worn it quite a bit you know, over the last couple of weeks since I got it. But today, having finally done like a full day wear test on it, I'm pretty impressed with it. I mean, look at my nose is barely worn off and I've had it on for over 10 hours and I wore a mask for an hour. So 
I am really impressed with this. If you have really oily skin, you're definitely gonna need to powder it because it does get a little shiny through the T-zone as the day wears on. But if you're someone with dry skin, you could really enjoy this. As far as the powders that I put with it, I would definitely say that I prefer the NYX powder over the Physician's Formula. I think they were both pretty good powders. They didn't make the makeup look heavy or cakey. Um, this one did control my oils a little bit better. The other thing that I prefer about this is that it doesn't have a fragrance. This one, of course, has a fragrance, which makes it, for me, not like 100% a fave. So of the two, I would definitely recommend the NYX. I believe this comes in a couple of shades. The shade I used today, I don't think I told you earlier, is light medium. I really enjoyed this eyeshadow palette. I just think this is such a pretty look. It's got a lot of really subtle neutral tones. It's got a lot of lighter and light medium tones. It gives you all those shades that you need to do your mid-tone blending. They give you mattes. The shimmers aren't super glittery. And then the last two things that I think were actually pretty successful were the two stamper things. So the brow stamp and the winged eyeliner stamp. I mean, this stuff, you put it on and it stays. I mean, look at this. You know, I felt like maybe the eyebrows were a little bit dark, but oh my gosh, that is not going anywhere. And then look at this wing. I mean, over 10 hours of wear and it is still that eyeliner is in place. I think it would take some practice to get the hang of it, but this is so much easier than trying to draw your own little wing out there. The one product that I'm most disappointed in is going to be the Pixi Waterline Liner. Um, $14 for this little guy. It had transferred to my lower waterline. A very similar liner for less money that performs a lot better, that doesn't smudge all over the place, doesn't transfer to the waterline, are these Sephora contour liners. They come in both, you know, mechanical and sharpenable pencils. And they're awesome. I've been talking about these for years. I do like the silver pixie liner from the bottom waterline. I think that one was really good. Other not favorite today was the lip liner from LA Girl. Not a huge fan of this mascara. I gotta say, this is one of the things that I'm not really enjoying. I feel like my lashes are looking pretty sparse now by the end of the day. Of course, all the brushes I use today are longtime favorites. This is my brush set with BK Beauty. I also have a discount code with BK Beauty, Angie10. We'll get you 10% off. There will be links to all the brushes that I used in the video, as well as all the products that I used in the video in the information box below the video. So thank you to those of you who suggested products for me to try in this video. I always appreciate your suggestions. If you have anything else that you want me to take a look at and put to the more mature skin full day wear test, go ahead and leave the product names in the comment section below the video. If you enjoyed the video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel. As always, I thank you so much for your time. I really appreciate your watching. Have a great day and I will see you in the next video. Take care everybody. Bye-bye.